This video introduces WordNet, a large lexical database that is commonly used for a wide range of tasks in natural language processing. I'll cover the basics of WordNet entries and sense relations, and then show a demo of what it looks like to browse WordNet online. WordNet is a large online dictionary of sorts containing information about nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Each unique word in WordNet has its own entry, and that entry may contain one or more senses or different meanings. For example, as shown in the entry on the right here, the word mask can be used as a noun or a verb, and in multiple different ways for each of those part of speech types. Words aren't distinguished from one another based on pronunciation, so homographs like bow and bow would be considered a single entry. Each sense listing in WordNet has a gloss, a list of synonyms if any are available, and sometimes examples of how the sense would be used in a sentence. A gloss is essentially a dictionary definition of the sense. So for example, on the right here, the gloss for the first sense of mask would be a covering to disguise or conceal the face. Lists of synonyms are usually referred to as synsets in WordNet and are an important tool for representing concepts. A good example of a sunset is shown in the third noun sense here, where we have masquerade, masquerade party, and mask spelled with a Q, all being used to refer to the concept of a party of guests wearing costumes and masks. We can see example sentences with many of the senses for the example on the right as well. For example, for the first verb sense, we have he masked his disappointment. Each sense is also assigned to a lexicographic category that corresponds to some semantic field. There are 26 lexicographic categories for nouns, 15 lexicographic categories for verbs, two lexicographic categories for adjectives, and just one for adverbs. The lexicographic categories for nouns and some corresponding examples of those categories reproduced from the textbook are shown in the table here. There are many different ways that senses can be related to one another in WordNet. Some core relations that you'll encounter are shown here. Hypernyms are more general terms for concepts. So for example, food would be a hypernym of cake, whereas hyponyms are more specific terms for concepts. So corgi would be a hyponym of dog. Marinyms are relations between a part and its whole. So wheel would be a marinym of car, and then car would be a holonym of wheel. Antonyms are two concepts that mean the opposite thing. So for example, leader would be an antonym of follower. These relations help define the hierarchical structure of WordNet. So for a given concept, you can move up the hierarchy to find its increasingly more general hypernyms, or you can move down the hierarchy to find its increasingly more specific hyponyms. I went ahead and traced the hierarchy for mask and ended up with what you see here. So you can see that WordNet lends itself nicely to graphical representation, and you can also add things like marinyms and antonyms into that graphical representation if you want. WordNet is publicly available online, so you can browse through it yourself, and I'll quickly show what that looks like here. So you can see the website here, and we'll go ahead and type in the word vote since that's a timely topic this week. We see that there are quite a few senses of the word, including five noun senses and five verb senses. Um, right now we can see the sinset, the gloss, and the example sentences. Let's say we also want to see some other information like the uh, lexicographic categories. So we can see that now we have that information along with some other things. If we want to see the hypernyms and hyponyms of one of these senses, we can click right here. Um, and then, as you can see, we have links to the um, direct hyponym, the full hyponym, which traces down to the most specific um, hyponym available, the direct hypernym, um, the inherited hypernym, uh, which traces all the way up to the most general class. Um, the sister term, which is a different hyponym of the same hypernym, and then the derivationally related form, um, which is a word or a set of words that have the same 
morphological root as the current word. So as you can see, WordNet provides a wealth of useful information for NLP tasks. It's easily accessible via the web, like you've seen here. Um, and there are also APIs that can access it in a variety of programming languages.